Good morning, YouTube, and happy Friday. Today is also observation day for me, so I am very excited to be sharing what I've been doing with my students. The observer will be meeting with me for my pre-conference later on today, and then they'll be coming in to observe about 40 minutes of my AP Chemistry class. I have to quickly go get ready for the class, but I just wanted to check in with you, and so I might not have enough time to check in with you before class starts. We'll see, but um, I'll definitely show you what I'm planning for my observation and, of course, how it goes. So I just finished up with my pre-conference and I had a couple minutes, so I thought I would fill you in. Um, so I'm really nervous. Um, it, I, I don't know why, I think just because it's such a different observation than I've ever had. Obviously doing this virtually is gonna be just very different. I, in fact, in my pre-conference, I'm like, so how is this gonna work? Like, am I gonna invite you to the Google Meet? So what I ended up doing was inviting the observer to the Google Meet, of course, and then um, put them as a co-teacher on my Google Classroom so then she can see the resources that I'm providing to my kids. I also just shared the digital card sort that I created so that she'll have the opportunity to kind of look and see you know, what the kids are actually doing. And then um, I kind of told her that one of the things that I do is I'll be on Google Classroom and we'll be monitoring what the students are typing and doing in Google Classroom. So I'll be putting comments and things in there. And I guess I just kind of want feedback. I just want to know like, Am I doing a good job being a virtual teacher because this is so new for all of us? So I'm gonna talk myself up here and you know hope that things go well. I'm gonna go relax for a few moments and then my observation is gonna begin really, really soon and I'll fill you in at the end of the day. I just finished my classes for the day. I had two classes back to back, so that's why I couldn't hop on here and tell you how the observation went. I think it went pretty well. Um, it's really hard to tell. Like I could usually tell when the observer is pretty happy with what I'm doing when they're smiling, but now everybody's obviously wearing a mask. So I didn't really, I couldn't really tell, but I, I think it went well. Um, the kids were really, really on it. Like it was awesome. All the kids just did such a great job. Um, I introduced some breakout room norms, which I'll definitely share with you guys um, because I, I've been kind of feeling like the way the kids are working in breakout rooms is just not very effective. And so um, I'll show you guys what I did for the breakout rooms and I'll show you the activity that I made. When my observer came in, I had this on the overhead. So even though I have students that are hybrid and virtual, I still make an agenda every week for the kids, but one slide is gonna represent the week. So we only have classes in a normal week three times a week. So two of which are going to be about 70 minutes and one of which is about 30 minutes. And so um, when the students came into the class, I only actually physically had two students in class with me. Um, this was displayed. So we worked on an AP problem of the day. Um, I've been doing problems of the day, but um, I've been using Nearpod for them and Nearpod really slows the com like the computers down for the kids. So I decided, let me try something different. So I actually made it using quizzes. Um, Quizzes is an awesome tool. It looks something like this. Um, I use the lesson feature. So I know you have the option of doing a lesson um, or like an actual just like quiz game thing. So I opted for the lesson. That way I could control which questions are shown up on the overhead um, and also which questions are on their screen. And one of the cool things about quizzes is, as I mentioned, they have the lesson feature. So you can toggle through. And when you toggle through, you have the ability to um, you know, address any misconceptions. You can see the students and their progress in real time. So I just did three multiple choice questions from AP Classroom. That way the students had the ability to, again, ask questions. If they didn't understand something, I could go over it. And these three questions were really, really good because the students actually got a lot of them wrong. So I was glad that we were able to talk about it as a class and learn more from it. After the AP problems of the day, I then went into the digital card sort, but I didn't start right with the digital card sort. Instead, I started talking about some of the breakout room norms. And um, one of the things that I wanted to emphasize is that as scientists, in order to learn science and do science, scientists need to collaborate. They need to be able to connect with each other. They need to be able to work with one another to solve the world's problems and, you know, make discoveries. And there are no scientists in the world that don't read other people's research and try to collaborate and communicate with other scientists. So I tried to kind of frame it as like, these are the breakout room norms that we're going to be using so that you guys can better effectively work together as a learning team. One of the things that really, I think, helped with this is bullet number three, 
where I ask my students to share their screen, read the question aloud, and facilitate the discussion for the slides that match their assigned color. So you'll notice in this digital card sort, there's a lot of different colored slides. And so every student was assigned a certain color. And what they had to do was read the information on that slide. Um, so I put their name on a Google slide that had a link to their breakout room. I have not been using the Google Meet breakout rooms as much because it's actually kind of annoying. You have to kind of sort all the students into their individual breakout rooms and it does kind of waste class time. So that's why I decided not to do it this way. Instead, I asked my students to get into their breakout rooms that um, I pre-created on just a Google slide link. Um, so Anyway, so these were some of the norms. They, I found them to be really helpful and it was great because when I went into the breakout rooms, they were all reading aloud and everybody had their screen pre presented. So I was like, awesome, this is working really well. So I was really happy with what they did. As far as the topics that this digital card sort kind of encompassed, um, so I wanted to review uh, photo electron spectroscopy with the students. So uh, we do a lot with photoelectron spectroscopy in our Chem 1 class um, for Honors Chem. So for the AP course, I didn't feel like I had to kind of go over it too, too much because the students just needed a, a nice review of it. So this was a, a reading slide. Obviously, the students had to read all of this. And then here's where we get into some kind of sorting here. So the students had to sort all of these different models. They had to sort them in order. And then they had to kind of defend their answer just like that. Um, they had to kind of look at the models over here. Again, click and drag them over. Um, now we move into reviewing the Bohr model and ionization energy. And the part of this is they had to make, again, a, another model so they can click and drag the pieces of the model very simply, very easily. And that way they don't have to like spend so, so much time, for example, like drawing and things. So that's what I ended up doing. And then, you know, they got their electrons and all that good stuff. So that was another one. And then we finally move into after that brief review photoelectron spectroscopy. Some of this is very similar to um, the Pogel that you may have seen. Um, now, there is a photoelectron spectrum um, generator that was really, really cool um, that somebody created, and it just creates it all in Excel. Um, and if you're a member of the AP Teacher Facebook group, I believe that is one of the resources posted, but um, that was what I used to create the spectra. And so um, they had to kind of pick the, the shell model that most closely represents the spectra. And then um, this was where they had to match the electron configuration. So over here on the left, there were all these different electron configurations that these students had to match with their different spectra and then identify the elements. And then... Um, after that, I asked them to compare two spectra and talk about why we're seeing different shifts in the peaks. And then finally, I ended with two AP FRQ questions that allowed the students to practice what we worked with in the card sort activity. All things considered, I think it was a pretty good observation. One of the coolest things that my observer saw when she first logged into the Google Meet is that all of the students had their cameras on. And you're saying, Karen, how do you get all your students to put their cameras on? Well, I have to be honest and say, I don't really know. I don't know if it's something about the way I talk to my students. Um, I'm definitely kind of like the more nurturing type teacher. I don't I'm not like authoritarian. I like, you know, make the, I don't make them do anything. I don't say like, oh, you have to put your camera on. I'm more kind of relaxed about it. And I say, hey, you know, if you are in a Google Meet with your boss, or if you wanted to talk to somebody about, you know, maybe applying for a job, you would be expected to be in a Google Meet with that person and you would have to meet with them face to face. And really the same thing holds true here too, because we're in a class and we're meeting as a class. And I also say, you know, you're not going to have to have it on the entire time. I just wanted to talk to you so that I can read your facial expressions and make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. And then, of course, if that doesn't work, usually what I do is I make light of it and I say, I'm not going to see you for the entire weekend. At least let me see you for a couple minutes right now. And then usually all the cameras will come on. But um, my go to line is usually let me see your smiling faces and the students will typically put on their camera. I'm pretty sure the observer was pretty surprised by that, but I'm glad that it's working somewhat. Um, and then I, to my surprise, when I went into the breakout rooms, the students all had their cameras on as well. So I was pretty, 
pretty thrilled with that too. While the students were working on their digital card sort, I spent time going through Google Classroom and just making comments and going into breakout rooms, seeing if they needed help with anything. I like to give them a little bit more wait time. If there is something really wrong with what they're typing in, then I kind of will give them the time to change it. And then if it's still really wrong, then I'll go in and I'll say, hey guys, let's look at question da da da. So that way they kind of know it's a little bit of a safe space that they can talk with each other, make mistakes, and I'm not gonna be like hovering over them to swoop down and correct them. I think that's it for me this week. I'm sorry the last few weeks my YouTube posting has been a little bit spotty. Um, it's been difficult to find balance with my personal life and my professional life, as I'm sure many of you are also struggling with that, especially if you're working from home. But for me, you know, my first priority is my kids, my students. And um, so I've been spending a lot of time preparing for those classes, and it's been hard to come up with a video that I want to create that I can feel good about showing to you guys. So while I can't promise that I'm going to be posting every week, I could at least promise you that I'll be doing every other week for the rest of the school year. But I will try. I will make it my goal to post every week. But sometimes, honestly, this year is just so draining. I'm sure you all can relate. Either way, I hope you are doing well. I hope your loved ones are doing well. And I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And hopefully, Hopefully, I'll be able to check in with you guys next week.